Hey, how you doing there? Henry Olson here from Super Simple Guitar, and welcome to another 5-Minute Friday. Short and simple little lesson that you can take, make your own, and have a lot of fun with over the weekend. So today we're going to be checking out one of my very most favorite songs. I remember listening to this as a kid over and over again on repeat. Um, I just love this song and the way um, that the band kicks in um, and just everything about it. The lyrics, it's just an amazing song. So, Free Fallen... But I'm going to be showing you also, um, and this is also the song that I pick up anytime I'm testing out a new acoustic guitar, this is what I'll play. Because you can just hear the strings spring so nicely. So I'm going to be showing you um, what's happening in the original as well, okay? So we're going to be learning both this, um, you know, just capo this way of playing it if you don't have a capo or just so you can grab your guitar and play it quickly. But I'm also going to be showing you... how to get that original sound there too, okay? So without further ado, let's just get in the lesson. Also, I'm gonna have a free tab for you um, so that if you, if I'm going too fast, you're not exactly sure what's happening, those tabs are gonna be linked right underneath or above me depending on what platform you're on. And also, you're gonna get a copy of my picture chord book when you get that tab and some other free courses. So a bunch of free goodies along with that tab, okay? All right, let's get into it. So if you wanna play along with the original, um, you could also put a capo on the first fret. It's in the key of F. You could do that or, or this. I'm going to be showing you a couple of ways to get through it. But for uh, the sake of simplicity, um, I'm just going to show you a very basic way without a capo first. And then we're going to move on to those slightly more, you know, capo added ways of playing it. I wouldn't say more complex, but just adding the capo, okay? So the first way to get through it, and this is how I really like to play it, is you just start off on an E major. Um, I missed the, the lower strings there, but you kind of want to get the lower strings in there, right? And then with these two fingers, we're just going to pop down one string set. And a lot of people always ask me, Henry, why are you leaving this first finger here, right? And the reason for that is because we're going to be going right back up and then sliding down to the ninth fret, okay? And the really cool thing about playing it this way is that all the strings can be ringing, it's totally fine. Sometimes when I go to that um, A, I'll mute out the sixth string with my thumb, but a lot of times I'll just let it ring. Sounds a little bit more muddy, but it sounds fine as well, okay? So that's the first way of getting through it. And the really cool thing about this tune is that if you're still um, learning how to strum and getting familiar with strumming, this is a great song to practice your strumming with, right? Because all kinds of different patterns will work really, really well, right? So... Also, if you're not thinking about this song specifically, just as in terms of fun chords to strum and just practice strumming and hone in on your strumming, this is great, okay? So to get the feeling of the tune, if, if you're strumming it, if you're trying to get the feeling of the tune and not just practice straight up strumming, it's kind of like this. We're leaving a lot of space. So we're hitting that first chord, the E, letting it ring out. Same with the A, we let the A ring out as well. So. slow E to A little strum then we hit the A back to E and then into B and this is a, a B by the way yeah you could call it B over E there's all kinds of different names we could give this now that all these open strings are ring but basically we're thinking A excuse me E A into B right okay so again, um, a lot of possibilities for you to practice your strumming, to improvise, to get creative with this. But again, to get that the real vibe of the tune, it's going to be this very kind of specific feel of just this laid back. And 
And you'll notice I'm also accenting some of those strums, right? So it's gentle. Then I'll hit a little bit harder, giving us dynamics. So also something to think about when you're strumming, not to just strum like a robot, but really think also in terms of dynamics. So sometimes you hit the strings light. Sometimes you give them a little bit of a harder hit, right? And that's that's what differentiates beginners from people where you listen to them play and you think, wow, that sounds really interesting and good, right? It's, it's these little details and these little dynamics that you can put in that makes a world of a difference, right? Okay, so that's the first way of getting through it. E to A. A, E, B. Okay, and again, this is the ninth fret, right? The second way is instead of playing the B like this, you could play it like this. Now this is gonna be more tricky for the beginners. And that's just a B power chord, but we're also gonna let the E and the B note ring, right? So. You could do a variation where you play it one time here and one time here, right? Both will work totally fine, all right? Now, if you wanna get the original tonality, just put a capo on the first fret, then the same will work. Just one string set higher up. Um, one fret higher up. You just move the whole thing a fret up, right? And then that changes the tonality. That's why we use capos, right? To change the tonality without changing any of those um, fingerings, right? Okay, so now to get to the original tonality and the original kind of distinct sound of the tune um, that we hopefully all know and love, right? So to get that, we're gonna go to the third fret with the capo, and now for the F, it's gonna be a D shape F, right? From like the capo, um, from like the cage system. Um, and I think the original is using a 12 string guitar, you know, that's what gives it that really nice, open stringy sound um, but we don't have one of those right here might have to get one it'll be a little bit of fun little tax write-off um, so I'm gonna say D right and I'm gonna say G but it really is F right okay but don't worry about that let's just keep things simple now okay so again capo in the third fret and we're just gonna do that same strum thing right so D to do a A sus 4 right think of your A right so D G and for this one I am muting out the sixth string um, with my thumb okay you don't you don't have to but it gets pretty muddy if you don't okay you could try to do if you're playing it like the intro is is instead of hitting strumming do so instead of doing a strum what I'm trying to do is arpeggiate the notes see how you now hear that right so to get the song started a cool thing you could do would be into strumming right it'll just give the listener a slight um, dynamic uh, variation right as I was saying before these little subtleties in your dynamics really go a long way right that really is the difference between somebody who really sounds great and somebody who's just getting started it's not just being able to switch the chords fast enough and being confident with strumming and being free with strumming right Feel free to go crazy with your strumming. The only way you're gonna learn how to strum is to just strum, right? Don't try to think up, down, down, up, whatever. Strum, right? And then once you have that stuff down, the dynamics. See, that's gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle. And then when I hit that A sus four, I'm, I'm hitting it a little bit harder, right? So. Another little thing that I'm doing here just to add some, some variation is when I go to that G. C 
see I hit that bass note first, then I strummed, right? So it's just giving us a little bit of something different to listen to rather than just the strums, right? And by hitting that root note, it's really telling the listener, okay, this is a G you're about to hear, right? So. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for today's lesson. Um, I hope that this gave you some um, ideas, some inspiration, something fun to practice on the weekend. Now your job is to take this, play it whatever variation you want to, and especially if you're just getting started with strumming, really try to freestyle with this, right? Take the chord progression, change it a little bit, you know, just play music, right? Play music, have fun with it, lose yourself in the music. That's when the magic really happens. You know, even bands when they're composing music, um, like Pink Floyd would talk about how they just jam over a couple of chords for four hours, right? And then it's, it's in that, um, meditational state where you're not your logic brain isn't thinking anymore and the right side of your brain the creative side can really kick in and take over okay and I've really noticed that also with one-on-one -on -one teaching um, when I would teach people that are very left brain if their job was a very logical job they'd have a harder time letting go and they'd want to analyze everything so if that's you um, and I know a lot of people have those kinds of jobs um, try to just let go when you're playing the guitar okay if you need to use a lot of logic in your daily life when you're playing the guitar have it be a practice in right brain creativity um, and just just try to let go and this is a great song to do that okay it's one of my favorite things to do anyways i hope that this helped you out if it did don't forget to give me a thumbs up hit subscribe um, and also um, right here there's another video just like this one click on that let's keep hanging out um, and if not then i'll see you next friday with another five minute friday all right thank you again i will see you very soon love you take it easy bye bye